heet Merksum België. Tweevoudig winnaar van de PDC World Youth Championship. En meervoudig winnaar in de PDC Development Tour. Dames en heren, Hasselt, make some noise for the Dream Maker Dancing Dimitri van de En de tweede speler uit Tipton, England. Halve finalist van de World Championship 2016 en 2017. Winnaar van de 2019 Czech Tars Open. Joza Jamie. tell you how excited Paul Nicholson is about Jamie Hughes's walk on music we'll talk about that in a moment or two but in the meantime we have Belgium's last man standing Belgium's number one and Belgium's chief main dream maker looking to keep the dream alive for the home fans uh, this weekend in the Belgian Darts Championship the inaugural Belgian Darts Championship as well because today started with four home hopes left in the field but one by one they have just all fallen by the wayside the most recent being Kim Hybrix of course just a few minutes ago at the hands of Jeffrey Desvan so it all rests on the shoulders of Dimitri Vandenberg the world number 29 the dream maker up against Yossa Jamie Hughes the number 14 seed here this weekend and of course one of our first time winners on the European Tour last year along with the likes of Joe Cullen and Christoph Ratajski and also Darrell Gurney, of course, a first-time winner on the European Tour as well. So Jamie Hughes here as the 14th seed here this weekend. A man who celebrated his 34th birthday just a couple of days ago as well, so a big night for him also. Uh, but Paul Nicholson, I know you just want to say something about Joy Division. First well, leg, what's Jamie not the like? Hughes, Great record, but I just don't think Game it's on music material. Oh, I don't know. His agent, Matt Ward, he tends to pick some horrors sometimes, but... Now and again, he gets it right, and I think he's nailed this one. I just think, given the right arena, 59. that will get people singing, and it can catch on. Uh, but as we've seen in English football grounds, the world. Uh, again, Hughes will tear you apart, and that'll be hopefully not the case for Dimitri. Well, here we go. 
the last Belgian in the field in the Belgian Darts Championship. 96. Dimitri Vandenberg opening his account yesterday in less than convincing fashion. I think it has to be said against Dirk Telnikez in the last match of the night. But I think the occasion might have got the better of him playing in front of his home crowd for the first time. Because on that evidence, there's very little sign of nerves tonight. Mm. Well, Dimitri is going to have to lift his level uh, in this game because Yoz has had a, a pretty stellar start to the year. Hasn't backed up that win in Prague as of yet. But when it comes to that European Tour title from last summer, he was just the guy that handled the heat better than anybody else. And some people really struggled with it, but Yoza just got on with it, played good darts. He played better stuff in that season, but he's the one that handled the situation better than anybody else. And he's handling this one pretty well as well. And there was a lot riding on it as well, because as well as wrapping up his first European Tour title, it just opened a lot of doors for him, didn't it? Including uh, a place at the World Match Play. Tops for Vandenberg for the opener. That only just found its way. Hey, that is very much Dimitri in the double Vandenberg. 20 then. And Vandenberg, dream start for the dream maker, early break of throw. Sometimes Select I think Dimmy is, he, he looks very nervous and he's, he's trying to play within himself. When he's played for Belgium with Captain Hybrex, sometimes he comes out of his shell and he plays even better. I think maybe. He wants to take a little Easy bit of that into this game and potentially some other challenges in front of him. Shouldn't be afraid to let off a little bit of steam, maybe. Well, it was head bound, wasn't it, for uh, Jamie Hughes after the conclusion of that first leg. The uh, highlight for Jamie Hughes so far this season, a run to the quarterfinals of the second Pro Tour event in Barnsley. That was the uh, opening 96. weekend of the season. He was eventually undone by Gabriel Clemens. The disappointment was that Clemens won it with an average of only 82 as well. So you could argue he'd done all the hard work because he'd beaten Van Gerwen in the round before 6-5. And maybe, just maybe that took a little bit out of him because he was on stage or on the floor again pretty quickly after that. Well, for me, Yoz has got to consolidate with solid form over the next three or four months because he wants to use that 25,000 ranking points he got in Prague to their full potential from here because he will lose that on the Pro Tour Order of Merit come the summer. A fortunate bounce out there for Jamie Hughes. And Dimitri's got himself in a handy position here with a, an early break and the lead on throw. I know about Yoza's propensity to score heavily when he gets that first dart right. 24. So Dimitri needs to make sure he doesn't have visits like that. Yeah, we've talked extensively today about the, uh, the scoring of certain players this one season. Jamie Hughes with a 180 to get himself two. very much on course to level things up. You have to scroll a long way down for these two in the uh, average charts on the Pro Tour so far this year. 23, Jamie Aguirre 101. Hughes just inside the top 50, but Vandenberg even further down the pecking order. Wasn't the case last year with Yozzo. He was averaging high and losing matches. Well, that was his trouble, wasn't it? Yeah, it was well documented. 42. See, 101 there for Jamie Hughes. He's not really made an impression at all. And Vandenberg all of a sudden looking at this 118 with real hope now. Well, he's stretching out that right shoulder, which is a worrying sign. But double 19 for Dimmy. 99. Him plenty of juice. Too much Jimmy of it. Require 59. Can Yozzo find himself? One of the two shots at tops. That central single was He's a lovely sign. Leg, it does equalise with a break back. Third yeah, leg, Jamie Hughes throw it first. Jamie Hughes, Game that off. might just settle him down. He, he just looks a little bit flat at the moment. Jamie, I'm not quite sure if there's anything on toward here. I wonder how these guys are going to fare at the UQ Open. So I know it's a yeah. big favourite of some of our audience. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you look at what happened last year with Aspinall. It was a great advert for the, for the tournament. I don't think it really needed an advert, but I think it was a great story to go along with all the other great stories that we've had of late on the big stage. Um, and it was just the, I suppose, the culmination of this 
remarkable transition move for Nathan Aspinall. And not only that, it's also acted as a springboard for him as well. And yeah, it's a tournament that throws things up. Uh, we've had some great finals over the years as well. He can't beat the tournament until I finish with the 170. And when Lloydie won the match play with the 170. And I just love the format as well. I think it's, it's obviously unique as well. So. I think there's a lot of participants as well. In 100. European Tour Darts, we get 48. So we get 47 games over the course of the three days. But with the UK Open, over three days, we get so many games and so many different personalities and talents. It's a, it's a festival. Yeah, it did produce, of course, a rather unwanted w story a couple of years ago when the beast from the East came in and the fans were kept away and it was a bit of a... Well, it was a very strange situation all round, wasn't it? Most of the matches, or all of the matches, were played in front of 56. just a handful Do of guests. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't pleasant. Was that the one that Anderson beat Corey Cadby? Corey Cadby yeah. in the final, yeah. Uh, and nobody saw it, nobody was there. If you wanted to watch it, you had to watch on TV. Double 50. Oh, what a perla! What a game this has been so far! Takes the 150 out. And these guys can't stop breaking each other. Three Four breaks out of three so Hughes far, a 150 first. checkout for Vandenberg Game once off. again. Jamie Hughes with his head bowed, looking to just compose himself. Yeah, the normally smooth-headed Jamie Hughes has got a bit of a 10 o'clock shadow right now. Late on a Saturday night, and when he won in Prague, he, was, he played late on the Friday, he played late on the Saturday. What am I playing this time of night? But right now, he minds when Dimmy's taking out 150 checkouts. And Jamie Hughes has had a, an interesting time of it as well at the uh, UK Open. Because that year when it did snow, I think he got to the fourth round without playing a game because one of his scheduled opponents was absent. I think that was Lurschbacker. The Hybrex family just having a, a day out there. Yeah, it's nice to see, actually. Seen Kim many a time distraught with defeat. But 60. it's good to see that He's got his daughter here and he's having a, a great time. Yeah, it was an odd UK Open, that beast from the Eastern, where touching wood right now on our commentary desk. And hopefully we don't get any of that in the next few days. The weather in Hasselt has been very pleasant over yes. the last couple of days, even though Thursday was a bit snowy. Yeah, bright in the morning. It's a bit rainy in the afternoon, but uh, when you're inside watching the darts, it doesn't really matter what the weather is like. Good to see Kim smiling, despite his uh, defeat just a few minutes ago at the hands of Desvan. Oh, great setup from Dimitri. Just seems to be a little bit sharper in the approach work than Jamie Hughes, who seems to be a tiny bit frustrated with the scoring element, which is usually his strongest part. 60, Dimitri require 40. Tops for halfway then. And the first hole to throw. Inching closer. Dimitri Vandenberg, that was the car composed of Belgium's number one and Belgium's number two giving it the thumbs up as well. I think the tournament is craving having a Belgian participant tomorrow on a final 99. Sunday because Ronnie Hybrex eliminated, Kim Hybrex eliminated, Mike Dedeka eliminated, Dimitri still alive but still work to do but he's looking better now than he has all weekend. Yeah and we have, we'll just see if he can the 180 here, we have the potential uh, footnote as well of a potential Vandenberg Price meeting in the third round tomorrow. I think the crowd might play their part in that one as well, but look at those numbers. Over 10 points seven. between them in the averages. Dimitri Vandenberg, 108.05 right now. Just goes to show, doesn't it, what you said earlier uh, in the weekend about Dimitri. Not really certain what you're going to get. He was, he was okay against Telnikas yesterday, but there were huge holes in the performance. But today... Very I, different. I, I think it was a really big deal for him yesterday, playing in front of his home crowd in a European Tour event for the first time. Um, I'm pretty sure he's never played in front of a crowd like this or, or in a tournament of this stature, of course, in front of his home crowd before. So, um, yeah, I think it was inevitable the nerves would be there. Uh, no sign of the nerves today, though, because Vandenberg 
has found another 180 and he's in control of this leg also to an extent he's looking for another break for a 4-1 lead I thought he'd feel more nervous tonight because he's the last one of the Belgians 85. that was the case or that was the potential 121. he wouldn't know it if he is feeling it 1-2-1 one, apiece big moments of the match this treble 17 for the bullseye not to be for Vandenberg 57. Jamie Rivoire, 120. Rosa needs a catalyst to get himself back in the match. This could be it. That is not what he needed. Can't finish 106 with two. 89. Dimitri Rivoire, 64. Has an option. It'll be the same region of the board, but he can go for the treble eight or the treble 16. Yeah, I think he'll look at the treble 16 here. But either way, he might have it covered either way. Yeah, treble 16 for double eight. Intake of breath there for Dimitri Vandenberg. 48 darts, and it wasn't too far away, but it's Jimmy far away Ryan enough for giving uh, Jamie 32. Hughes another chance. Double 16 for Hughes. Yeah, on the three, Jimmy Hughes. Big moments of the match that I think 4 1 Dimitri might have been a bit too much for Jamie Hughes to claw back. But on. Very much involved. Just the one break in it still. And of course, Dimitri was 100. one of two players who didn't have to qualify because they are from this country they were given the spot which they both took by winning their first game they guaranteed ranking money 100 is the only Belgian European tour of the season so they will not get that opportunity again yeah so next time around when we're in Sindelfingen we'll have Gabriel Clements and Max Hopp as the two automatic qualifiers 96. for the host nation given they are one and two on the pro tour order of merit outside of the top 16. yeah one thing that hasn't been talked about yet is clemens going to make his world cup debut this year that is going to be a very interesting team because shindy and hop have been a great double act the last few seasons so there's going to be changes in the german squad yeah the next three European tour events are in Germany, actually. We're in Leverkusen at the end of March, and then we go to Munich for the Easter weekend as well. So a big opportunity for Clemens and Hopp to really uh, get some points on the board for their ranking money. It's an annual Easter trip for us, isn't it? Yes, it Munich. is. Munich. 85. And then we go to Graz and Budapest and Riesa in the month of May. New territory there with Budapest. And then at the end of June, we make our first ever visit to the city of Trier. What's your favourite one? Um, Past or present? Gosh, good question. I'll have a little dwell on that. I'll just see what Hughes can do here because there's an opportunity now for Hughes with those two treble twenties just to uh, force the hand of Dimitri Vandenberg and look at that, he's left himself double 18. And suddenly Hughes is looking good value for a break of throw to get himself back on track at three apiece. Vandenberg is not going to get uh, the 1-3-1. One, one. Did you see Hughes create the angle for that last 60? 36. Really intelligent darts from Yoza for three darts at 36 to equalise and keep the crowd quiet. Really well done. Back. Two breaks apiece now. One hold apiece. Leg, Jamie Duthrope. That sort of encounter. Game on. I would like the European Tour, and this is my own personal 55. want. I'd love us to go back to Halle in Germany. Mm. We used to play at the Jerry Weber Centre, where they have a very big tennis tournament. Yep. And we used to have the German Darts Championship there in the early days. I, I think that would be a nice return. Whoa. No, better go get that one quickly, Demi. That one's dangling. Yeah, he did step up to the ball very quickly indeed. Five 180s for the match, 125 for the weekend so far. Maybe 126 right now with Jamie Hughes threatening once again. There we are. Opened up with 55, but back on course with the 180. High quality this. And you get the feeling the crowd are settling into their seats because this 58. one could go very deep. Yeah, Vandenberg still averaging over 105. Jamie Hughes' average is nudging the 100 mark now as well. I think the crowd are a little puffed out a little bit after the last couple of matches with De Decker and Hybrex. They just need a little bit of a breather. 
Yeah, switch to the 19s there just in case because he was on the 266 and there was danger there of leaving a bogey number. Sensible by Hughes. 135. Still Jamie obviously Rivoire, 129. thinking very clearly. Well, fortunately for Dimmy, getting the treble there gets him south of 130, which means it's a bit easier. Yozza setting up. Yeah, double 16. For his next visit, and he'll be hopeful of getting there, barring Vandenberg taking out this one, two, eight. Got to stay. He's got to stay there, and he has stayed there, and he wants double ten. Ooh, Jamie Hughes breathes a big sigh of relief, Jamie and Jamie Hughes 32. can now perhaps mop up a third successive leg without reply. Plenty of room left. Oh, now there's none. Where does he go? Well, he's got a Roberto Carlos, this one. Right. He can use the top half centimetre of the double 16, or he can go the bottom half. The middle is blocked. Top half it is. Oh, what a shot from Jimmy Hughes! Oh, Roberto Carlos, eat your heart out! What a double hey, 16 that is! That was such intelligent Jamie. play. He had a good pace up and down the hockey. He looked from left to right. He gave it a good long stare. The crowd who were booing him, and then he just lollipopped it in. That was marvellous. That was really intelligent 16. stuff from Jamie Hughes. And it is three legs without reply. And the crowd have really gone silent now. And Vandenberg has opened up with a 60. And it's all just gone a little bit flat for the Belgians because that was. A moment of match. What sorcery from Jamie Hughes. Sorcery, great word. Gotta ask, which double 16 was better? The Rob Cross in the Premier League or that one? I'm gonna say that 100. one. That one had more in the way, and it was a trickier shot. Pure darting skill from Yoza. And the way he's 96. responded to the brilliance of Vandenberg has to be applauded. Could have easily wilted when Vandenberg was doing his thing, but 100. he's got a bit gritty in this match as Jamie Hughes, and he, he doesn't celebrate a great deal. He's not one of those types of players. No, he's been very placid today, or as indeed he often is. Uh, but I, I'd say even more so. Easy to. I think there was a lot of the Belgian crowd thinking then that was a great shot and applauding it themselves as they should be yeah they're, they're a fairly knowledgeable bunch this lot and um, you know they can appreciate good stuff like that I can't believe we're into Saturday night and I haven't mentioned Eric Claris yet and Leo Lawrence the great Belgian players of all well you've just done it <laughs> there you go <laughs> well he might stay there for double 11 Ooh. 31. Jamie He's taken out of the 150, didn't he, for that break of throw in the third leg. Oh, Jamie Hughes. Another. Well, he gave it plenty of air. 86. And Vandenberg's got a tricky looking Jamie legs 11 here. Yeah, it went a little bit flat back for Hughes and Vandenberg. Oh, no he's score. busted his score. I was just going to joke and say, don't miss the big number. Jamie because Rick we Warren saw it twice, 52. didn't we, in the previous match from Kim Hybrex. And Vandenberg has followed suit by hitting a fat 19 when he needed a three. Tops for Yozza. Getting some stick from the crowd. Well, but he's got to do it this time. He's got a 19 to the left, a 17 to the right. Just stay straight. And give yourself two shots at double four. This single is not easy under this kind of pressure. Well, let's see how he handles it this time. Better. Not quite dead sensor, but that'll do. Double two for a four-all scoreline. Nine. And Hughes can break again. This time Jamie he's looking at double 20. ten. I think he prefers the double ten in many ways, you could say. Having got the double twenty out of the way, that might not be a bad thing. He's inside some way though for double five. Double four. He split it. Oh, okay, and he split it to very good effect G. as well. You can hear a pin drop after that one goes in. Hughes, 5 3 to the good, one away. And no Vandenberg. Jamie to the oh, he goes to sleep tonight and he closes Game his on. eyes. He might just see that single 19 in the back of his eyelids. 
The problem was it wasn't close. It wasn't close. It was by a any huge stretch. pull. It was huge. What I admire about the Jamie Hughes check out there for 20 is that as soon as it goes Seven inside, two. he knows he's going two double four. He doesn't want to go at double five, go inside and have a dart he can't use. He'd rather have one shot at double four. Well, that was a third break for Jamie Hughes. Three breaks to two, 21 dart breaker throw as well, which tells you what a nervy, tetchy leg it was. Now, what can we draw from that, Paul? It's a barrage of numbers there. 50. Well, <laughs> shall we free frame it for a moment? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like binary code to me, but... <laughs> It tells me that there's more attempts at doubles early in the match and later on, 98. less attempts, more hits. And I don't really associate these guys with a certain double. 60. I think if you look at someone like James Wade yeah. or Rob Cross, or you, there are definitive ones that they go for, tops 18, simple as that. I thought you were going to say Dennis Priestley, double eight then as well. Dennis is good everything. <laughs> I, I, I like Dennis Priestley as much as Dan like Steve Beaton. I'm amazed you've not mentioned Dennis Priestley prior to that as well. <laughs> anyway, go on, sorry. I just think these guys are proficient all around the board. I, I think Dimitri, to a certain extent, is a double 18 guy. He'd much rather leave that, but he doesn't mind other parts of the board either he's a really good bullshitter as Dimitri yeah. Jamie Hughes Jamie Hughes gets a shot at the ball it'll be for the match well, no, not for the first time tonight Hughes has strayed into the fives and there is a prospect of Vandenberg breaking back here for 5-4 it would be a sixth break of throw 24. it's the sort of match where Hughes of throw decisive now. if Hughes can get a hold here somehow that'll be it job done well, he's not going to get a shot at double ten, but he is going to get a shot at the bull. Said he was a good bull oh, shooter. Not on this occasion. And Yoza has a very doable chance to end the game right here. Four nineteens. Well, that's one of them. And that is only two. Fifty-four. Dimitri required twenty-five. Well, Vandenberg can't afford to miss this single nine. Just inside. Very much the money for double eights. And it is another break. Three breaks apiece. Still just about out advantage Jamie Hughes because if we do go to a decider, it would be Hughes with the throw. Whose shoes would you rather 58. be in? Would you be rather in Hughes's shoes? Or somebody else's shoes? Sounds like a very good Buddy Holly song that. <laughs> Whose shoes would you rather be in? Hughes' shoes? Right now, I'd rather be in Yoza's shoes. I timed that brilliantly, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, ton 80 on the Vandenberg throw will uh, feel like maybe 280. Especially after that opening 58. 58. A lot of chatter lately about how darts can be jazzed up with different formats. There's been chatter about the shootout potential. I want the quad board back just for one tournament. Give the referee something else to think about. 59. Well, Van der Berg has something to think about here. Six starts without a treble in this leg. Making amends here, though, maybe. With two. And a sub 40 to get himself involved again. Needed that. Still advantage, Yozza. It's got to go 18 here. Does so. 98. If you got a single 20 on dart two there, he couldn't even finish. So, somewhat fortunate that he got the 60 on dart two. Yeah, but you might say his courage was rewarded in, in, in some way. But, yeah. the academic anyway. Because he set himself up with 65 as a result of that one. Hughes looking at a big finish and it's not going to go and Vandenberg will return looking at 65 to take us all the way to a decider. 64. Not had, Dimitri not requires 65. Score, no. None. It's unusual. He went for treble 11. Single 14 or 18 for double. It's only just in this turn. Can he do it again? 
No, Fonzie Sewell. Shaves the wire. He got away with it, didn't he? That second half of the single 18 one, almost straight into the single one. That really would have scuppered him. At least he had the chance. But a ton here for Hughes. Top stops. 48 32. Tops was blocked. I think that was the right play, but unable to get that treble 16 for a match winning double. And Dimitri has a choice. Straight for double nine, 44. or does he split Dimitri just wide. like Yossa did in a previous leg? He's splitting. Sensible. Because he's good on the eight. He's fair on the eight. And we are going all the way. Just going back to Jamie Hughes, his course of action. I mean, you say that the double 20 was flopped, but let's face it, that double 16 was completely covered and he found a way through. I just thought he might have fancied his chances with that one. Yeah, the other option he had, which was immensely conventional, is why not go for the 60? Go for the 60 for double 10. Oh, Chance of arm. Yeah. Yeah. there anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we'll never know because Vandenberg has won the leg and Hughes does have the advantage and he's done a lot with it as well. He's got the ton 40 and Vandenberg needs to find a response. 100. He's got to stay in touch with Yozza in the first nine darts of this leg. Because if Yozza gets himself down to 121 after nine, Dimitri is up against it. Great match this. 100. Good performance by both. They've both had spells of the game where they've been threatening to be the dominant force. We've had, what, three breaks apiece, two holes apiece. Plenty of drama, which has lent itself to the occasion. We've got the added caveat or the added scenario with Vandenberg being the last Belgian standing. But Jamie Hughes should get down to a finish first, and he will do. He gets to 121 after nine. Manageable. Forces Dimi to max up to get in touch. He can get to a finish, but only with another 60, and he gets there. Flip of a coin, not quite flip of a coin. Hughes in the ascendancy. Certainly is now. And he's got one shot at the bullseye. 96. Now, will Vandenberg get a shot at the bullseye? 161. Only one way this can go. This would tear the roof off this place. Roof is intact, but pressure will be applied because Jozak only has two opportunities to win this match at double eight. Composing himself as he did for that wonderful attempt at double 16, which he nailed, and he composes himself to good effect once again. And Jamie Hughes, the number 14 seed, wouldn't say he tore Vandenberg apart as we talked about at the outset with his new choice of walk-on music. But a win is a win, and he will take that 6-5, battling the crowd as well, you might say, in some point. But what a match that was. Three breaks apiece, two holes apiece going into the decider, and in the end, it was Jamie Hughes who held his nerve. And Jamie Hughes it was who provided one of the shots of the weekend for me with that double 16. And Hughes it is who goes through to face Gerwin Price in the last 16 tomorrow. And the number 14 seed can reflect on mission accomplished in that one. Two matches remaining. We've got Johnny Clayton, Steve West to round things off. But on the way next, the number six seed, Menstruel Sulevich, a European Tour champion, of course. And Ryan Searle. Searle, you may remember, beat Sulevich in the World Champs two years ago. Congratulations, Jamie Hughes, keeping your cool in the most decisive moments in the game, like in the seventh leg. The double 16 was an amazing shot with two darts blocking the double 16. Well, what's, uh, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, to be honest, I've, I've got a knack of being able to find a line when I, when I have to move, you know. Um, it, it's not something that's luck, you know. I, I do that quite a lot, to be honest. So, sometimes it helps when I've got less of a target to aim for. That, don't ask me how, but you know what I mean? I, I do feel I, I have to be aggressive, so I, I just try, try and throw them straight, and a lot of the times they go in. And in the last leg, in money time, you, uh, you put it very well also, any double eight? Yeah, um, I, 
I think that the bull in the practice room probably won me that match because he gave me the chance in the decided leg to go from the front foot and to put the pressure on him so he was chasing me. And I think that, that, was, that was what happened. Um, I, I always like to win the ball because there's a lot of games that go to deciding legs because we, we're all very good players, very similar ability. So, yeah, I, I think the ball up at the, in the back probably won me the match. And with the crowd booing, you still keep your cool. Congratulations, Jamie Hughes. You, you face Gurren Price tomorrow. Good luck. Dames and heren, applause for Jamie Hughes.